business level uh, and try to provide a, a good environment for entrepreneurs and free enterprises in this country. Uh, tax policy, I believe, is important. Not everybody agrees with this. I believe that uh, having a stable tax policy and one that's predictable for businesses, uh, one that is, uh, that is encouraging of capital, uh, that keeps taxes uh, low in this country, is a way to encourage the free enterprise system and a way to encourage entrepreneurs to create jobs. And then the regulatory environment is also something we've been working on, uh, where uh, you have a lot of new things hitting business owners. And some of them aren't worried about and some of them aren't. I mean, you have a lot of things hitting them. Uh, not all of them understand what the impact of the health care bill is going to be on their bottom line. Some of them aren't affected by it. Uh, the ones that are, over a thousand businesses, uh, have been so affected by it that they've asked to be exempted out. So over a thousand uh, businesses now in the country that have been exempted out of the health care uh, bill. And so that causes uh, some challenges to uh, businesses as they try to deal with what the costs of that are going to be. Uh, you have some changes in the EPA that, whether they're good intention or bad intention, and we can debate those things, do create a cost of business, a cost of doing business for uh, small business owners in this country. And so, in any time, and the EPA will admit this when you have them, when you have them before a committee, the EPA regulations aren't necessarily about creating jobs, they're about affecting the environment. And so, we have to understand when we put some of these things forward, it does have an impact on job creation. That's a trade-off. And so that's part of the debate discussion we have to have, and that's why we've been looking at some of these regulations determining whether it's the right time given the fiscal situation of our country. And then you have the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau uh, is another issue uh, where you have a new agency with unlimited powers that's being created, and that's a concern uh, for uh, a lot of the folks in the deal with capital as we try to get investments to happen in this country. And then finally, the biggest issue is just creating stability, having stable policy, having stable uh, uh, parameters so that businesses feel that it's okay to take a risk, uh, that uh, people who are going to create jobs feel that it's okay to invest because they believe that the economy is going to grow with them. And so we need to create stability in this country. So those are some of the things we're working on, which is clearly different than the approach of the last couple of years, which sort of went the other direction. And there's clearly a healthy debate in this country about which uh, direction makes the most sense. The third issue I want to talk about a little bit is energy. Uh, and we've all been sort of following the energy debate in this country, the energy costs. Uh, you have $4 gasoline. Uh, that's something that affects uh, a lot of Americans, affects all of us. Uh, we have rising energy costs in many different areas. And so we have to figure out how we can find a balance between our competing priorities. Uh, we need good, stable sources of domestic energy. We need uh, good, stable jobs in the United States that go along with the creation of that domestic energy. Uh, we need uh, domestic energy that doesn't have us uh, dependent on foreign oil or foreign sources of energy. Uh, and we need to keep in mind our impact on the environment. So you can take the, uh, the uh, energy costs, uh, the economic uh, benefits, and the environmental costs, and put them together, you come up with policies that can continue to build this economy uh, and be responsible at the same time. And so that's. Uh, a challenge we're having right now, and clearly uh, there are different sides in this conversation. Uh, recently, uh, the House passed several bills that would promote uh, and allow uh, offshore drilling to occur uh, again in this country, yeah. particularly in the Gulf. Yeah. And the President has also uh, given his comments or given his go-ahead to continue uh, to restart Gulf uh, shore drilling. You saw President Obama talk about that last week, but uh, that's one of the ways we can help reduce uh, energy costs is to uh, begin to uh, find domestic sources of energy. And so energy is an issue we're working on. We're trying to find ways uh, to, uh, to create affordable sources of energy for uh, low-income folks and for businesses and people around the country. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about is just do sort of a little quick PowerPoint on spending. And I just want to share a few slides with you uh, just so we're sort of all on the same page on a few, on a few things. And so if I can... Okay, so just so we're all on the same page, when we talk about spending, when I'm on appropriations, and when we have a discussion about what the, what the, uh, what the choices are before us, it's helpful to at least look at the pie, and I will say many, uh, you know, many folks haven't had a chance to look at these things, I'm sure a lot of folks who have even run for office haven't had a chance to look at them before they, they get there, but you have really sort of three different segments of the federal budget. You have this, these, this, these two segments over here. You have non-defense discretionary spending, and you have defense spending. Those two uh, items, uh, you see they equate to maybe $1.3 uh, uh, trillion, dollars, give or take. Uh, and then you have this 
portion of the pie that includes Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, interest, and other mandatory spending. And that other mandatory spending is going to be things like our pension uh, obligations, things that are is set in law. And so when we, when we have a discussion about how we're going to fix uh, this budget situation we're in, we all know the basic facts, right? We're, we're running about a $1.5, $1.6 trillion uh, deficit this year. Uh, our national debt now is at $14.3 trillion. Uh, we all know that there's a debate going on right now about whether we should borrow more money and go beyond uh, that debt ceiling. And so as part of that, we have to figure out uh, how do we get this budget back in line. Uh, when you're running a $1.5 trillion deficit, you can see pretty quickly that you can eliminate all of our non-defense spending. These are going to be for your agencies, your departments, Department of Ag, Department of Education, all those things. Or, uh, and eliminate all of your defense spending, and you still run a deficit. Now, no one there is advocating that we eliminate uh, all of these things. But I think it puts in perspective uh, how challenging the issue is when we have this portion of the budget uh, is already spent before we walk in the door. In fact, before I step foot in the Appropriations Committee, we're already running a deficit. Because this part of the pie equates to over the amount of money that we get into this country that, that comes into to Washington. And so this is just instructive so we're all dealing with the same sort of information. deficits we've been running by year since 1990, so you can get a perspective on the actual deficits we're running each year. So you can see in, in 1990 uh, through about 96, uh, we were running deficits between the two and four hundred thousand, two and four hundred or two and four hundred million range. Uh, we ran uh, surpluses from 98, 99, and 2000, and then 2002 to 2007, we continued to run uh, deficits. And then the last three years, uh, we've run the biggest deficits in U.S. history. And so, the helpful the helpful part of this conversation is to try to is to try to not source blame. And, we, and I've been on the floor where um, Republicans have blamed Obama for everything, and Democrats have blamed Bush for everything. And I will tell you, there's a, probably a healthy argument on each side. What I will say is that I'm I'm all about trying to figure out ways we can resolve these situations going forward. And it does help to sort of look at the historical analysis of where we are. I'm not, and I'm not interested, I'm not here to, to, to source blame other than to figure out how we as a community can solve these problems. So we know that for every dollar we spend, we're borrowing 42 cents. So think about that. For every dollar the federal government spends today, 42 cents will be borrowed. And it won't be borrowed from next year. It won't be borrowed from two years from now. It won't be borrowed from five years from now. It will be borrowed from 20, 30, 40, and 50 years from now. Because 